Discover the countryside and understand China. This is the Daddy Lecture. Welcome, I'm your host, Chia Li. A rare locust plague broke out in eastern Africa and gradually spread to Southeast Asia, with 400 billion locusts blocking the sky and devouring all the plants that could be eaten. What kind of impact will locusts have on the places they have been and how to prevent it? Regarding these issues, today we invited Professor Zewa Chang, researcher of Institute of Plant Protection, IPP, of Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences, CAAS, and also Scientist of China Agriculture Research System. At the same time, we also invited several plant protection station staff from different places in China and friends who are concerned about locust plague to join us by video connection today. They are now ready and let's have a look. Professor Zhang, come here. Hello, everyone. Professor Zhang, can you say hello to the camera and wave your hand? Hello, everyone. Okay. Next, we will hand over our time to Professor Zhang, please. From your questions, I can also feel your concern for the prevention and control of locust plagues. Today, I would like to share these two issues that everyone cares about. Let's look at the second question first. Can the locust plague be solved by chemical pesticides? In fact, that's what we did in history. In 1985, locust plagues broke out on the African continent of the Arabian Peninsula for many consecutive years, resulting in serious losses of farmland and grassland of 11 million square kilometers in more than 30 countries. The Food and Agricultural Organization of the United Nations, FAO, organized fundraising worldwide, purchased chemical pesticides, and carried out large-scale control. Then what happened? Locusts were killed. However, not only locusts, but also other creatures, especially birds, lizards, frogs, and other natural enemies that can eat locusts, were also killed. After testing, locusts developed resistance. Pesticide residues increased in the soil, and water pollution aggravated, which caused the whole ecosystem to be damaged in varying degrees. A few years later, the locust plague came again. So, what's the topic I would like to share with you today? That is, locusts are not our enemies. We turn them into our enemies. Why am I saying this? Locusts have lived on Earth for more than 300 million years. They are originally a member of the ecosystem and play an important role in the ecosystem. Thousands of species depend on them to survive. When the density of locusts is low, they are not a threat to crops and grassland. Many animals that depend on locusts are restricting the increase of locusts, such as birds, lizards, and frogs. In nature, this relationship of biological chain controls the peaceful coexistence of locusts and human beings. Then why is it a disaster again? To a large extent, it's due to the interference of human activities and the excess use of resources that led to the destruction of the ecological environment, resulting in locusts to lose their natural control causing population outbreak and forming disasters. In addition, the locusts themselves have gained innate advantages in the long-term evolution process, much like the monsters in Pandora's box. There is no problem if they are locked in the box. Once they are released, they will have a tremendous destructive power and endless troubles. We can see that locusts are warriors born with armor. The human skeleton grows inside the body, while the locust skeleton grows on the external surface which is called exoskeleton. It's very hard, just like the warriors equipped with armor. Ordinary natural enemies have no way to take it. Locusts can also deform like transformers. I just said the locusts do not pose a threat at low density. However, once their population grows to a certain extent, due to mutual contact, they will be more and more. By colliding with each other, they will transmit a kind of chemical information. What kind of information will they transmit? The information of deformation. In a very short period of time, the original gentle solitary locust, also known as the scattered locust, will become gregarious locust. After becoming gregarious locust, they will become more violent, and their combat effectiveness will increase by 10 levels. It used to be scattered soldiers, but now it has become a well-trained regular army. Unified command, concerted action, directional migration. It has the ability to go to heaven and earth, wade across the sea, and be omnipotent. 
At the same time, the locust can change color like a chameleon. Once it becomes a gregarious locust, its body color turns bright yellow with black spots on it. The warning color of many other insects is a kind of camouflage. In fact, there is no poison. Natural enemies can recognize it and continue to prey on it. However, locusts have the ability to change their warning color. They also produce this kind of chemical weapon. Once they have chemical weapons and warning colors, the natural enemies of locusts, such as birds, lizards, and frogs, can't do anything about them. Without natural control, the population growth of locusts will not be restricted. A female can lay 200 to 300 eggs. We give a discount that each generation increases by 100 times. The second generation will increase by 10,000 times. And the third generation will increase by 1 million times. In other words, locusts will break out in a very short time. Wherever you go, the grass and trees are exhausted and the lands bared thousands of miles. So why say we turned locusts into enemies? Because we opened the Pandora's box and the ecosystem is the magic box. Human beings have destroyed the ecosystem, and the ecosystem is out of balance, which is tantamount to releasing the monster locust. So how can we put this monster back in Pandora's box? First of all, we should rebuild the balance of the ecosystem, protect the natural enemies, and let the natural enemies watch the monster for us. Secondly, we should use fungi, bacteria, viruses, protozoa, and other means to make locusts sick and pathogens epidemic to achieve long-term control. In this way, we are tantamount to putting the monster locust back in Pandora's box. In addition, we should control locusts according to their characteristics. For example, we should let them no longer become gregarious and die alone. Let them no longer produce poisons with chemical weapons. And let their natural enemies like birds, lizards, and frogs exert their natural effects. We should neither allow them to develop nor kill them completely. We should achieve the goal of allowing the existence of locusts and no harm to human. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Zhang. Please take a seat. I just noticed the two boxes in front of me. There are insect specimens in them. They should be locusts, right? Yes, uh, let's have a look. This is not Pandora's box, and locusts are not monsters. We can see that there is nothing special about it and it is very difficult to connect it with the locust plague that endangers the global, spreads and sweeps all over the world. We can see what the locusts look like. First, it is divided into three body segments, head, thorax, and abdomen, two pair of wings, three pairs of feet, one pair of compound eyes, and one pair of antenna. It's no different from other insects, and we wronged it by treating it as a monster. Mr. Jung. Many people say locusts are grasshoppers. Are they the same? Locusts are a large category. We call them locusts in Chinese. Grasshoppers are equivalent to common names or dialects. How come these two locusts look different? The head of that one is big and with blue color. This one is small and with brown color. These are Locusta migratoria manalensis, and those are grasshoppers, Odelius ashiaticus. Is this the locust of the African locust plague? Well, it belongs to the same family of locusts in Africa. They all can migrate and cause damage. Is it that big? The desert locust is slender than this is. We can take a look at it. Its body and wings are longer, and its hind feet have sufficient jumping ability. The legs are also very thick. So they can migrate for a long distance. Like the desert locust. It used to cross the Atlantic. How can they fly so far? They can take advantage of the wind just like Zhu Liang, a Chinese politician, military strategist. What about this one? It says grasshoppers, Odelius asiaticus. This is also a very well-known locust. There was a very serious disaster in our country. In 2002, they moved to the city of Erlianhat. We vividly called it locust rain, like it was raining. We were staying in the hotel at that time and heard the sound of a rainstorm outside. As a result, we went out to see that it was not rainstorm, but locust rain. What kind of damage was caused by the grasshoppers in 2002? A locust plague of 100 million metric units broke out on the 200 square kilometers of land in Xilingolik. Oh my God. Its harm is quite serious. 
After the locust plague, it was like a smoke-free fire, all withered. You also mentioned Pandora's magic box just now. It's like opening such a box, there will be many locusts flying out. But I know you don't mean that. What exactly do you mean by this Pandora's box? Actually, we call our ecosystem Pandora's magic box. It is such a system formed in the long-term process of natural evolution. And then the system controls all living things with natural laws. So we call it Pandora's box, which is very vivid. You just mentioned that locusts are harmless. How can locusts be harmless when they have caused such serious consequences? Every life in the ecosystem has its own value of existence. Only when humans and organisms depend on each other can they better adapt to the blue planet. However, when locusts are not plagued, the locusts themselves will provide some food for other life, and they play a very important role in maintaining the balance of the ecosystem. In fact, it contributes to the balance of the ecosystem. As long as it does not cause disaster, it is not our enemy. Then, in the original ecosystem, it is a certain number, and it is restricted and controlled. How can it suddenly become a disaster? What on earth affects it? It is mainly the interference of human activities and the overutilization of natural resources, which leads to the imbalance of the ecosystem. For example, in the Sahel region of Africa, deforestation, land burning, and reclamation have led to a serious imbalance in the ecological environment followed by an increase in spawning sites and decrease in natural enemies. Originally, there were all kinds of creatures in this ecosystem, but now it becomes farmland. There are only pests left in it, and there are no natural enemies, so it will break out into disasters. In addition, its spawning areas have increased significantly, so this is a prerequisite for its outbreak. So we understand that opening Pandora's box is actually our artificial destruction of the ecosystem. You also said that locusts are not enemies. How should we understand this? In ecosystem, locusts can provide food for other insects or other lives. And the other is that locusts can connect the preceding and the following in the food chain. Locusts do not pose any threat to us when they do not become a plague, nor do they do any harm. So we say that locusts are not enemies. Only when they become a disaster will they become our enemies. So how did it cause the disaster? It is when we humans who have destroyed the ecology and caused the imbalance that led to the disaster. So the responsibility does not lie with the locust, but with us. So locusts are not enemies. We turn them into enemies, right? But people are still very worried about the migration of the African desert locust. I mentioned the desert locust just now. It has a record of crossing the Atlantic Ocean. Good wind depends on strength. Yes, it comes from the wind. For example, locusts in Pakistan come by the wind. Today we also invited Wang Tongwei, Deputy Director of Shandong Plant Protection Station, who is one of the locust control experts to assist Pakistan's locust plague this year. Hello, Director Wang. Hello, host. Mr. Wang, would you please tell us about the basic situation of the locust plague in Pakistan? Since last year, Pakistan has suffered a serious desert locust disaster, which has been widely concerned by the international community. China formed this emergency locust control working group. After arriving, we have successfully carried out field investigations in several desert locust bellies of Sindh, Baluchistan, and Punjab provinces, where desert locusts are more serious, including digging locust eggs, checking locust density, investigating the ecological environment of desert locust occurrences, and so on. According to our investigation and on-the-spot exchanges, this locust plague is still very serious. Like the locust population density and the locust egg density seen in Punjab province, I have not seen a situation in domestic working on plant production for nearly 30 years. I took some videos and pictures which I can show to the audience. Let's play this short video. Professor Zhang, are these birds or locusts? They're locusts. They're migrating locusts. Such a big one. There seems to be a lot. One is the sandy environment, and the other is the river valley environment. These two environments are basically the habitats that desert locusts prefer. What do locusts mainly eat in this place? Some shrubs and grasses all around.
Mr. Wang, we saw such a short film about this situation looks really serious. Locusts are large and numerous, so why does our country go to aid the locust plague in Pakistan? First of all, China and Pakistan have a strong traditional friendship. Now, Pakistan is suffering from locust disaster. It is natural for us to lend a helping hand, which is also a concrete manifestation of deepening the iron ties between China and Pakistan. Besides, in the face of locust plague, no country can manage alone or stand aloof. In addition to investigation, what specific assistance work has been done by our working group? The Chinese working group, together with the relevant officials and professionals from the agricultural departments and disaster management departments of Pakistan country, provinces, and cities, analyzed the development trend of the locust disaster in the future and trained local technicians. For example, Professor Zhang Long of China Agricultural University made two special technical reports on behalf of the working group, shared some advanced and effective experience and technology in our locust control work, proposed a locust plague management system of accurate monitoring, effective prevention and control, regional governance and scientific and technological support, and assisted Pakistan to improve the comprehensive locust plague management plan. Our proposal is very well received by Pakistan. At the same time, we also reported what we learned from the investigation to the country, and China government also formulated a locust plague material assistance plan in time. The first batch of aid arrived in Pakistan on March 9th and solved the urgent need for the prevention and control of the locust plague in Pakistan. What kind of materials? The desert locust in Pakistan has reached disaster level. So the fastest and most effective way of emergency disaster prevention and reduction is chemical pesticide control. Our first aid materials include high efficiency and low toxic pesticides and advanced pesticide application equipment. Okay, thank you for Mr. Wang's sharing. Professor Zhang, when it comes to locust control, there are all kinds of tricks on the internet. I've seen a particularly funny one saying that 100,000 ducks will be sent to Pakistan to fight locusts. Do you think it will work? I also read the report. Raising chickens and ducks to control locusts, on the one hand, can increase the income of farmers and herdsmen. On the other hand, can control the outbreak of locusts to a certain extent. But in the face of a locust swarm with hundreds of thousands, millions of square kilometers, 100,000 ducks are not enough. The military forces are seriously unequal. So when the ducks go there, they may not get the locusts, and maybe they have been eaten by the locust swarms. Can locusts eat ducks? Once there are more locusts, their food is not selective. They can eat everything. That really doesn't leave a piece wherever they go. Yes. I also heard some sayings. As the netizens said, ducks do not work, but our pan is ready. We can eat locusts. Historically, locusts can be used as food for people, but we all can't eat so much. All your crops have been eaten up when locusts break out. In addition, as wild animals, eating locusts also has certain risks. You mean that wild animals and locusts also contain some bacteria, viruses, and other ingredients that are not suitable for human body? Yes. After all, locusts live in the wild, and they can carry germs and microbes. So we don't know what they have in their bodies now. Therefore, we can't rule out this risk. Professor Zhang, what about the desert locust? How should we prevent it? With regard to this question, one of my colleagues, Tu Zongbing, associate researcher, will answer this question. He's done a lot of work in the early stage. Okay, let's connect with Tu Xiongbing, Associate Researcher of Institute of Plant Protection, Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences. Hello, Mr. Tu. Hello, host. Could you please explain the monitoring and control methods of desert locusts for us? Mr. Zhang also mentioned earlier that locusts are an important part of the ecosystem, so any single measure is not enough to deal with the locust plague. So at this stage, we mainly carry out some basic research work including the growth inhibition, infertility induction, diapause regulation, and the development of some other new locusticides. Combined with our existing research on fungal pesticides and auxiliary ecological control measures, a green sustainable technology prevention and control system is formed. 
The system aims to achieve a goal of green, environmental protection, and harmony. We've also actively carried out international cooperation. Now we and Swabi University in Pakistan have mainly carried out the research on fungal biological pesticides to control locusts. And we have shared with them our country's technology and experience in locust control. So next, we mainly focused on controlling the source of desert locusts in the Thar Desert. And we can also make positive contributions to the prevention and control of the desert locust in the future. Can you tell us what kind of solutions are available? At this stage, we would like to recommend a prevention and control method of Microorganism Plus. What is Microorganism Plus? We mainly use fungal, bacteria, viruses, and microsporidia to control locusts, which are harmless to the environment. What are the benefits of this biological pesticide? It can make locusts suffer from influenza and make influenza continue, and reduce the reproductive rate, survival rate, and lifespan of locusts. The longest control effect we observe now can reach up to 8 to 10 years. The practice of the past 20 years has proved that this method of prevention and control is completely harmless to the environment and is highly respected in many countries. In China, it has been vigorously promoted and applied. This kind of prevention technology has gone abroad, especially in countries along the Belt and Road, such as Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Laos, and so on. These countries often communicate with us and learn from our locust control technology. Another is ecological control, which has also achieved great success in some areas, such as rosy starling. It is an important natural enemy of locusts. It has an important biological characteristic. It likes to breed in brick or stone piles. It does not come from our country. We observed that every spring it migrates to our country from Central Asia, West Asia, and Eastern Europe to breed. But when they just moved here, there was no suitable breeding place. So they often moved to the construction site and the edge of some houses of farmers and herdsmen to breed, which would have had some impact on the construction site and the lives of farmers and herdsmen. I read a report in June when the construction of National Highway was the most intense. It was also the peak incubation period of rosy starling in China. In order to protect these birds, the construction site took temporary emergency measures to suspend construction and wait for the birds to breed. There were many reports like this, so after finding this rule, we built nests for these birds in the western region of Xinjiang. Especially from May to August, our goal is to provide them a good environment. Then you may wonder why we put so much effort into attracting this bird. I think this bird is a very valuable asset left by our old ancestors, which passes the concept of ecological control. This kind of prevention and control measures are completely harmless and sustainable, and the control effect is very good. We observed that an adult bird can feed on about 200 locusts a day, and this kind of bird is very smart. Before they prey, they will send a small team, like scouts, to detect where the main force of locusts is. And locusts are also very cunning. If you want to eat me, I will hide from you and hide in the grass to prevent you from finding me. We often see cattle and sheep to eat grass which will alarm and startle locusts in the process of grazing. Then the locusts must move before the cattle and sheep come out to feed. The rosy starling is very smart. As soon as the locust moves, they will seize this opportunity and quickly go back to inform the army to eliminate the locusts. After more than 20 years of development, every year about 1 million rosy starlings now can be attracted to China. This bird has made a positive contribution to our country's grassland locust control, especially grassland ecological protection. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tu, for bringing us so many harmless prevention and control methods. Thank you, Professor Zhang. Which area do you think our country has done better in locust control? Our country has a history of thousands of years in dealing with locust disasters. In this process, we have accumulated some experience, especially ecological control of locusts. It is mainly through the adjustment of planting structure and grassland ecological environment protection measures 
combined with these measures to transform the locust occurrence place into an environment that is not just conducive to the occurrence of locusts, but conducive to the occurrence of natural enemies of locusts to achieve a goal of controlling locusts. These ecological control technologies, such as planting some plants that locusts don't like to eat and transforming tidal flats to raise fish and shrimp so that tidal flats are not conducive to the survival of locusts. Mr. Wang already has a lot of experience on it. Speaking of ecological control, we need to contact Mr. Wang again. As a plant protection expert, Mr. Wang has been fighting in the front line for more than 20 years. What prevention and control experiences can you share to the audience? There are about a dozen species of locusts in Shandong province, most of which are native locusts that can't migrate over long distance. Farmers can control them as a routine pest in the process of production and management. So the locust plague we usually say mainly refers to the migratory locusts. First, it is a major migratory pest. Second, its breeding areas are mainly state-owned deserted beaches such as the Yellow River Beach, Large Lake and Reservoir Beach, and coastal beaches, etc. Farmers will not take the initiative to prevent and control locusts if they are not in the farmer's own land. Then the government must take the lead to prevent and control. Our main task is to control migratory locusts. This season, Mr. Wang is also busy in the field every day. We also have a small short video to see their daily life. Mr. Wang, we see your work is really very hard. Do you still need to go to the field every day? Yes. Since March, locust monitoring is one of the most important tasks in the busiest season for our grassroot plant protection departments to carry out pest monitoring and control technical guidance. And migratory locust monitoring is one of the most important tasks. In March, we will go to the locust area many times to sample and dig locust eggs, according to the density of the locust eggs and the survival situation in the winter. We can judge whether the occurrence of locusts this year is serious or light. We also examine the development progress of locust eggs, roughly and for the occurrence period, and determine the best control period. From late April to the end of May, it is necessary to investigate the hatching and density distribution of locusts many times to further determine the best time for prevention and control, and to do so when the control of summer locusts ends at the end of June and early July, it is necessary to carry out a survey of residual locusts. One is to test the control effect, and the other is to judge the occurrence trend of autumn locusts. The residual locusts should also be investigated by the end of August and the first 10 days of September, so as to provide a basis for predicting the occurrence trend of locusts in the next year. The whole monitoring is basically such a process. Over and over again, the Plant Protection Department systematically investigates and monitors the whole growth period of locusts throughout the year to keep abreast of the occurrence and development dynamics of locusts at any time, so as to provide accurate basis for scientific prevention and control. Thank you, Mr. Wang, and thanks to the staff of the Plant Protection Station for your hard work. Professor Zhang, in fact, from the story of Station Master Wang, we can also know that many locusts are aborigines in our country, right? In addition, there should have been many locust plagues in our country. How did we deal with these locust plagues? Where did these locust plagues occur? There are more than 1,200 species of locusts in our country, and 50 to 60 species of locusts are infested. As you said, it is aboriginal, and it isn't able to fly from a long distance, but its harm is still relatively serious. It mainly occurs in the northern grassland of our country. Our country has 6 billion metric units of grassland. It's obviously that in such a large area, the damage of locusts to the ecological environment is relatively serious. Have you ever encountered any impressive locust plague? Inner Mongolia is one of the provinces with serious locust plague in China. I'm from Inner Mongolia. I experienced locust plague when I was young, so my understanding of locust plague has a certain history. When I was a teenager, a large swarm of locusts migrated from a distance and crossed the playground. What was it like when you saw them coming? At that time, the locusts didn't grow wings and they jumped here from long distance. We could see that there were lots of locusts jumping everywhere and the swarms of locusts were heading in the same direction. That happened in June. When in July, less than half a month, 
It was supposed to be a green grassland turned into all withered yellow and bare losses. Therefore, the damage of locusts is very serious. Did they eat up the grass on the grassland, even the roots? Yes. The children at that time shouted that locusts were coming and they were quite happy. We found the adults were worried and sighed, saying there was no food for the cattle and sheep, and they were worried about all this. After the locust plague, all the grasses were eaten up, and we realized that there was no food for cattle and sheep, just like we humans have no food ration. After the locust plague, the grassland was damaged and also affected the cattle and sheep, and the ultimate impact is our human survival. Regarding the prevention and control of our grasslands, we also invited a guest to connect. She is Shan Yamin, Section Chief of Grassland Workstation in Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region. I believe she should have similar experience with you. Let's connect her. Hello, Madam Shang. Hello, host. Hello, everyone. Madam Shang, Inner Mongolia, as the largest grassland area in China, are there a lot of pressures to control locusts? Could you please share your experiences? There must be pressure, but we are not panic because we have a relatively perfect monitoring and early warning system, emergency response mechanism, top-down organization and coordination agencies, as well as more than 40 professional prevention and control service teams. Once the locusts outbreak, we will immediately start the emergency plan. Have you ever experienced locust plague? How to deal with it? Let's take 2009 as an example. In June, there was a large-scale outbreak of locusts in grassland. The main reason for the outbreak was due to less rainfall and continuous drought in most regions since June. There are control standards for locusts. It doesn't mean that when we find locusts, we have to control them. Professor Zhang said earlier that locusts are also part of the ecosystem. We control locusts only when locusts reach a certain density, and this density value is the control standard. What exactly is this standard? Can you give us an example? Locusts can be divided into large, medium, and small according to individual size. For medium-sized individual locusts, if there are 15 locusts per meter squared we need to control, the 15 locusts per meter squared is the control standard. The area that reaches 15 locusts per meter squared is the damage area, and reaches 30 locusts per meter squared is the area that is more than twice the control standard as the serious damage area. The outbreak of grassland locusts in 2009 has a large area and a wide range. Especially in Ulan Chabu, there is a serious damage area of more than 17 million meters with an average of 44 locusts per square meter. We can think about what it looks like that 40 locusts in a place as large as one square meter and what extent can 40 locusts damage. Locusts eat up all the pastures so that the cattle and sheep have no grass to eat. The locusts eat the pastures more fiercely than the cattle and sheep there is still a certain stubble height left for cattle and sheep. There is basically nothing left where locusts have eaten. It's not an exaggeration to say that there is nothing left in thousands of miles of land. Therefore, the harm caused by this locust is not just as simple as grazing pastures, destroying pastures, and destroying the ecological environment. It has actually posed a serious threat to the production and life of farmers and herdsmen. What specific prevention and control measures should we take? Every year, we predict the occurrence trend according to the monitoring data and reserve pesticides and other prevention and control materials in advance. So in the case of sudden outbreak, we immediately launched the emergency plan. Eight aircrafts were urgently dispatched to Hulambayar City, Hengan League, and Ulaanchabu City in China to control locusts, which have a large occurrence area and serious damage. I would like to tell you under what circumstances it is appropriate to use aircraft for prevention and control. Generally, aircraft control can be used in areas where the occurrence area of grassland locusts is large, more than 300,000 mu. The disaster is more serious, the vegetation is higher, the fence is dense, the terrain is relatively flat, and there are no tall obstacles. In other areas, our professional prevention and control service teams use large sprayers to control which can not only ensure the efficiency and quality of the prevention and control, but also ensure the effectiveness of prevention and control. In some areas with more complicated topography, the knapsack sprayer is used, which requires a large amount of labor. 
Will this pesticide control pollute forage and affect cattle and sheep? What we can advocate now is green prevention and control. So what kind of prevention method is this? The first is to reduce the environmental pollution caused by chemical pesticides. The harm of cattle and sheep may be the second. There are also some non-target organisms. The locusts we control are the target organism. To protect these non-target organisms, we need to adopt green prevention and control methods, such as microbial agents. Thank you, Madam Shan. I feel very comfortable with your word of target. Because it is special for locusts and will not harm cattle, sheep, and ecology, which is very important. Today, there are insect enthusiasts online. He is Dr. Fang Zhang Lu from China Agricultural University. Hello, Dr. Fang. Hello, host. Hello, everyone. Dr. Fang, where are you now? What crop is this behind you? I am now in the wheat field of my hometown. Why did you choose this place to connect with us? It's mainly because we're talking about locusts today. Wheat, as a gramineous plant, is one of the favorite foods for locusts. So this place is not only a crop field for you, but also a place to study insects, right? Exactly. I particularly like insects because insects are a relatively special biological group in the world. Insects not only fly in the sky, run on the ground, swim in water, but also drill in the soil. They can survive and settle down in many places, even some ecological environments that we can't reach. Do you have any questions you want to ask? I'd like to ask Mr. Wang what experience and methods our country has in locust control can be promoted to the world. Okay, let's invite Mr. Wang to answer this question for us. Just now, Professor Zhang also introduced that locusts are a part of the whole ecological chain. As a biological species, we cannot eliminate them, nor should we do so. Our goal is to control them in a certain amount. I think the most fundamental measure is to improve the ecological environment of locusts. This refers to the plant afforestation, construction of water conservancy, enrichment of grassland, farmland development, aquaculture, etc. We should transform the locust occurrence area into an environment that is not conducive to the survival of locusts and restore the ecology. For example, Shandong has been transformed from more than 24 million metric units in the early days of the founding of the People's Republic of China to less than 7 million metric units now, which is key to maintaining the stability of locusts in Shandong and the most fundamental way to realize the sustainability management of the locust plague. Thank you, Mr. Wang. Thank you, Mr. Wang, and thank you, Dr. Fang, for your questions. What questions do other online audiences have to ask? Hello, classmate Zhao Jishuan from China Agricultural University. Hello, host. Hello, everyone. What do you want to ask Professor Zhang? Hello, Professor John. I'm a student majoring in plant protection. At present, I'm conducting an experiment on biological control of locusts. You mentioned that we shouldn't kill all the locusts. So my question is, what kind of balance should humans reach with locusts? For your question on how locusts can reach a balance with human beings in the process of control, first of all, we need a ruler to measure our control. A ruler is an indicator of prevention and control, and one ruler may not be enough, because different areas need different rulers to measure, and different rulers have different control methods. So we can ensure the density of locusts is below this ruler, and locusts will coexist peacefully with us to achieve a balance. In fact, it's still to control the quantity of locusts. Okay, thank you. Next, we are going to connect to the next audience. Her name is Li Shuang, a graduate student from the Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences and a student at school. Hello, host. Hello, everyone. You should be in the laboratory. Do you have any questions to ask Professor Zhang? I'm a graduate student from the Institute of Plant Protection, Chinese Academy of Agricultural Sciences. I'm working on research of biological control of pests. Just now, other experts also mentioned the pest monitoring. For migratory pests, they are suddenly happened. How can we monitor them in advance? Is there any way to make locusts or human friends again? How did this migratory pest come from? First of all, it's carried by the wind, so according to the path of the wind, we can predict and seize these stages to monitor. Once the locust is found, we will take measures immediately, 
In addition, we will need to work together to make friends with locusts in the future. As mentioned above, we can use various methods, including biological methods, ecological methods, even chemical methods, when locusts break out. Therefore, our ultimate goal formed by these various measures is to formulate a green and sustainable prevention and control method. Then, we will be able to form an ecological balance and be friends with locusts again. Thank you very much, Professor Zhang. Okay, thank you, Li Shuang. Thank you. We have all heard about the butterfly effect, and I also know about the locust effect through today's Dadi Lecture Room. It is precisely because in a complete ecosystem, even a small locust can cause unpredictable disasters and losses. Therefore, the harmonious coexistence between human beings and nature should always be a problem worthy of consideration. Okay, thank you for your coming, Professor Zhang. Discover the countryside. Understand China. This is Dadi Lecture. See you next time.